25. Exodus 25. And the Bible, if, if I would, should have been better prepared, but the Bible does mention that there are things that your parents done that you're going to be held accountable for. And then there's another verse in there that says something to the contrary. But however, for the purposes of what we're studying at this particular point, the Bible does allude to that. 25 and verse what, Major? 20 and verse 5. 20 and verse 5. Yeah. Okay. I got a different version. Okay. Are we on the same page, folks? To them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God... Major, I don't think they're on the page yet. We got a couple okay. of people... Exodus 20, verse 5. It's the second book in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, page 80. 25. And I have a different version, so whoever has that in that needs to read it. The 20th chapter, the verse, the fifth verse, part of the 10th of Andrew. Okay. 10th of Andrew. So we got it? Yes, ma'am. Read it, please. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, your God, am the jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the father. The third and fourth generation of those who, who Amen. Amen. That was it. You know what? So what I'm saying is, you know what? We have to break what I call the generational curse. You know, just because your parents drunk alcohol, they may be. They may have been falling down drunks. They may have been, you know, just drug abusers. You know, but you, it's it's been delivered to you to break that cycle of dependency and drugs and substance abuse, domestic violence. Uh, you know, cussing and swearing, uh, uh, not, you know, maybe they, they was always on welfare. It's your, it's, at this particular point, it's, it's been given to you to break that welfare uh, uh, mentality. Are you following them? We all need a little help. Well, God is saying, I'm, I'm here to give it to you. And you know what? I think somewhere they say where it might even skip a generation. Have you ever heard of that, Major? Yes. And then it, it, it comes to the, other, to the next generation. So, you know, we need to be good examples to our children, uh, you know, in terms of them at least being able to say, because if their children uh, 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 are, are confronted with that particular uh, 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 issue. So I think that's pretty good. I was looking at something as well in terms of, in terms of that. And uh, if you look at, I want to say Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's in there, man. It's in there. At any rate, I'm not going to stay on that because I could get in there too. But it is in Deuteronomy. I should have came better prepared. Good to have you here, brother. Here we go. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into that one. Okay, here we go. Acknowledging our weaknesses. Let's go again on page uh, 95. Admitting our defects to God can be very frightening. We may choose to believe that because God is in charge of all of the universe... All events are his will. In that way, blaming God can be a method for us to deny our parts in the problem. It is important to understand that God has given us free will. He wants what is best for us, but he allows us to make choices free of his manipulation. As we admit our wrongs to him, we must hold fast to his unconditional and everlasting love for us. He will strengthen and guide us as we pursue his desire for us to lead a healthier and peaceful life. And the next power passage gives us some better insight to, to what the word of God has to say and to giving us fuel to carry out. Uh, step number five, admit it to God, to ourselves, and another human being, the exact nature of a wrong. Who would like to read that? Someone, please. Anyone? On page... 96. All right, sis. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Admitting our wrongs to God initiates the restoration of our personal integrity by removing the mask behind which we have hidden. Okay. And, and, and so here's what he said. I like this one as well. So then, and I like that. So then is a reflective thought as to, as to what we've discussed all the way up to now. We're looking at that. We're examining that. We're, we're making an assessment of everything that we talked about up to, up to now. Again, we want to stay focused on God. And then he says, you know what? Irregardless of how you got to where you at, everybody's got to give an account to God. Your parents may have done something, you know. 
Uh, the, the employer may have fired you unjustly. Uh, you know, you may have some bad issues about the judge may have sent you to the penitentiary without being uh, uh, fair about it. You know, things may have happened. In life, things happen. But what they say in, in here is everybody's going to have to give an account. Our focus is, is to stay focused on God so we can be healed, delivered, and set free from those things that are uh, 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 that we're being challenged and confronted by. And then as we go down a little bit further, it talks about step five is for your own benefit. God is already, he knows you. You are beginning a process of living life uh, of humility, honesty, and courage. The result is freedom. Amen. Happiness and serenity. The following information is helpful when completing your fifth step. For lack of time, I'm not going to go through it all. But it says, uh, you can imagine God sitting across from you in terms of us admitting to God. And then he says, also, we want to start with a prayer uh, as well. And then, you you know, acknowledging that you're got ready for God to reveal those issues inside of you. Uh, and you want to do that openly and hurt, um, humbly. And he says, uh, my hurt, in terms of my hurtful behavior, self-centeredness, and negative traits, we're asking God to be there. And uh, also you want to mention that you're grateful for your gifts and your abilities. And then we want to say, as, uh, we, it, it goes on further, it says, take away my fear uh, of being known and rejected. And then we go down to the next uh, suggestion that he makes. Speak audibly as we're talking to God uh, in, in, in terms of him. Uh, uh, come back in th 30 minutes. I'm ready in my house, so I'm trying to put some money in my pocket. Excuse me for that. But at any rate, let's go a little bit further. Speak audibly and sincerely and honestly. And there's that word, honestly. Be aware of the emotions may surface. You know, you may tear up. Don't let that stop you. You know, you may, you, you know, you may be heartfelt and heart touched. You may get in touch with some emotions that you haven't been in contact with for a long time. And then it goes down a little bit further. It says, our, our admissions to ourselves is the least threatening part of step number five. Remember, it's to God, to ourselves. That's the second aspect of it. And it can be done with the least risk. However, it is the most easiest part of step five because it is not, correction, it is not the easiest part of step five because of denial. We uh, use denial as a coping mechanism and, and unconscious tool to protect ourselves from pain. Through denial, we are protected from Facing the truth about ourselves, denial is not easily conquered. But we have done. But we. But if we have done an honest step four inventory, the barrier of denial is already weakening. So you can trust that denial aspect uh, to be weakened. If you, this, this is important that you've done step number four uh, effectively. Who would like to read the next power passage? Can I get a volunteer? Thank you, brother. Okay. If we claim to be without sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. John, 1 John 1, 8 through 9. Mm -hmm. Self-deception is human nature. In step five, we are talented to be honest. You know what? I, I, I like this word in terms of purifier. Because if anyone knows, you, you can have... You may think you've got clean water, but you know there's people that sell purifiers that go go over the, your tap water. You, you follow them? It looked like it's clean. But when he gets through putting his chemical testers on it and it turns green and it turns blue, I don't know if he's, if this is a trick or whatever. But when you finish, you're looking at this whole uh, 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 litmus test and stick and it turns easy. He said, man, I didn't know it was that bad. If it's green, it's, it's, it's this bad. Don't let it turn red. You need two purifying kits. Are you, you follow what I'm saying? And so what he says with his spirit, we might think we okay. We may believe that we're healed, delivered, and totally set free. We ain't got a worry in the world in terms of us relapsing. But what happened is if you don't stay focused on God, if you're not honest, and if you mess around and slip into a state of denial instead of being truthful to it, uh, you're success you, you, it might look like it's good, but the only way that you're going to be purified is maintaining that relationship with God. And so um, my connection is that I'm trying to make, make is as if you have the purifier on the water. It looked like it's clean. Put it in the cup. Put it in the clear glass. Man, this is a good glass of water. What I need with a but he brings the God is the test. Remember, he said he's gonna judge everybody. He knows the secrets in the, in the chambers of our heart. Are we are we honest? Are we really working this program? Are, are we letting him guide us? Are, are we being honest in terms of where we need help? 
asking him forgiveness in areas where we made the wrong choice, are we securing a solid foundation, maintaining him as the rock of our found, the rock of our salvation and foundation? Are we doing that? Only way that we're purified is maintaining a relationship with him. Anybody identify with that? That's that that I like that water, that water purification type yeah, example. Right okay, let's let's move down a little bit further. Right in your first step inventory, begin the process of developing your self-awareness. This is the first step toward what will soon become genuine. Check this out. I love this self-aspect. Genuine self-love. That's the first one. And then he says solitary self-appraisal. When we go from self-love to self-appraisal, is the beginning of your confession. It is in step five that you turn that knowledge into Improved self-acceptance. Check this out. So we go through a process of self-awareness. When we're not no longer in denial. We move into self-love. We go from self-awareness to self-love. Then we move into self-appraisal. Now, and then we go finally to self-acceptance. I accept who I am. I'm not trying to be nobody else. But I like the self-appraisal where we get there. You know what? We, we actually get to make an appraisal of our life in terms of being honest. I'll tell you what, if you, here's another example. How many people have seen a car and the car looks good as well, but, you know, you think about it, man, this is a big car, man. If, if I buy this big SUV uh, in terms of appraising that situation, I ain't got the money to pay for that gas. It's going to cost me more in gas than I make on my paycheck practically. Are you following what I'm saying? Or... The maintenance, I, 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 you know, I'm buying Mercedes Benz, I forget, or Cadillac, I forget those big bills in terms of repairing those when repairs come. Are you following what I'm saying? So we need to make an appraisal. Do I need to move in a neighborhood where there's a lot of drug activity and, and appraising? Do I need to get back into a relationship where there's going to be fussing and cussing? Are you following what I'm saying? Do I need to get back into a... Uh, a, a, a home and my, my, my son is involved in drugs or my daughter is involved or, or, my, or my partner is involved. We make an honest appraisal after, after having did all of these steps up to this particular point. And then we move from there after doing a, being an honest appraisal. We accept who we are. There's some things I just can't do that I used to do. Are you following what I'm saying? We can make an honest appraisal. I heard somebody say, if you count, I don't remember where I heard this. Say, say you count it fair, you'll find it all there. Everything that we need, if we be fair about it, my brother over here with me. Am I, am you with me on that one? Yeah. We can lie to ourselves and say, you know what, it's better than what. But if we count it fair, God has given us everything that we need in, in terms of sustaining us and equipping us to have a good, successful recovery program. It's a process. And it starts again, I'll leave that with. The process starts with self-awareness. We did that. And then we go towards self-love, self-appraisal, and then self-acceptance. I really like that process. I want to be a part of that process. The following information is helpful when completing your fifth step uh, with yourself. And then it goes through another uh, a set of circumstances where we're, we're, it's just ourselves when we're sitting in the chair and, and going through the process of saying it with ourselves. Let's look on page 98. Here's the third aspect of it. Uh, admit it to, our, to God, to ourselves, and here he is, the third aspect to another human being. Admitting our wrongs to another human being is the most powerful part of step five. It is, it is a true exercise in humility and will help us break down our defenses. Being rigorously honest with another human being may frighten us and cause us to procrastinate this portion of step five. It is tempting to believe that telling God is all that is necessary because he ultimately forgives all sins. While this is true, confession to another provides special healing and wholeness and releases the grip of a hidden sin. Who would like to read that power of passage that really brings out what the word of God has to say and giving us a keen insight as to what what, what, what was just uh, uh, expressed. We would like to read that. Thank you, sis. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. Okay. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. When we realize how far we have fallen, we clearly set the extent of our sin, perhaps for the first time. 
Mm -hmm. And you know, humility is so important. Let's look at the book of Proverbs. We're probably all familiar with this aspect of, of humility. Let's look at the book of Proverbs. Let's see what book, the book of wisdom book has to say about humility. You know about that, don't you, Jerry? Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go straight to the point. Proverbs and humility. This is a very familiar passage that we're probably all uh, very familiar with. Um, chapter 16, verse 18. These are some more indicators. You, you, can, you can pretty much uh, uh, gauge uh, uh, where you at in terms of uh, uh, being honest and, 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 and exercising this humility. There, there are certain things that, that, are, that I want to say gives us a sense of awareness of, of our, our, the level of our humility. And if, we're not, if we aren't humble, what can happen as a result of it? Uh, 16 and 18. Somebody tell everybody else what page is on. 656. Okay. All right. My brother almost ready for us, right? 16 and 18. What page is it? 656. 656. So it's essential. The point of it is, is it's important that we uh, exercise a sense of humility. And what my brother trying to find it is, is that I, I like this part about where he says, uh, when we come to our senses, it's never too late to realize that you don't have to live like that no more. It's never too late uh, 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 to, to, to turn and uh, go in the other direction. Are you following what I'm saying? It's never too late. So who would like to read that? Verse 18. Thank you, brother. Six, uh, chapter 16, verse 18. Okay. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to choose understanding rather than silver. The highway of the upright avoids evil. Mm -hmm. now, okay, you go ahead. He who guards his, guards his way, guards his life. Pride goes before destruction. There we go. And haughty spirit before his fall. Mm -hmm. So, you know, pri being prideful in, in terms of just being in, 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 being in that state of denial and not being honest about what it is that you, and your situation, can we remember, uh, it says, it, pr being prideful leads to destruction and a fall. Can anybody remember when you used to say, you know what, I, I, I'm going to deal with that substance abuse thing later on. Uh, not now, maybe later, after I spend all my paycheck. Or, you know, you want to pick the time and the place. You know, just you just uh, don't want to admit uh, that things are as bad as they are. And so what he says is, you know, if you want to maintain that pride, if you get back into that, the attitude of, of maintaining that pride, you, you, can, you can expect a fall to come very soon. But, uh, but more importantly, if we turn to Hebrews, and I'm just going to run through this one real quick. I want to say Hebrews chapter 7, verse uh, 25. At any point, you can, ex you, can, you, can, you can move away from your substance abuse and addictive behavior. As well as we can move away from everything that we discovered about ourselves in terms of steps one through, one through four, and now that we're at five. And uh, here it says here, and I'm going to read it for the lack of time. It says, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. It says, wherefore he is able, just like the man who was eating with the pigs, where, the prodigal son, he is able also to save them to the other or most. Here's the condition that they come unto God by him. That they come to God, come unto God by him. Seeing he is ever, he ever liveth to make it intercessions for them to make your situation better, more tolerable, uh, for you to be able to come out of those situations and circumstances, to be victorious over those challenges. He's ever ready to make intercessions. Okay, so there we go with the uh, prodigal son. Now, we'll go uh, when he came to his senses. Have all of us come to our senses and understand that we don't need to live like that anymore? Can I get a show? Have most of us come to our senses? Are we still down on, on we're straddling the fence? And we, 